Hello everyone, my name is Bo Alexander and I'm so glad that you're here. Today's video is very special to me. I'm so excited to share with you all that I've had the opportunity to team up with one of my own personal favorite YouTubers, Liz Besanson, for an epic thrifting collaboration. Together we set a $100 budget and challenged one another to source unique and eclectic vintage and thrifted finds to style and accessorize different areas of our homes with. We each shop vintage and thrift stores in our own areas and mail the finds that we found to each other's homes to open before you all on camera. So stay tuned to see what pieces that Liz's hand sourced for me to incorporate into my home. And be sure to hop on over to Liz's video if you haven't watched it already to see what incredible pieces that I found for her to use in her home. I'll be sure to link her video in the description box and pin it in a comment below because believe me you are definitely going to want to watch both. Now if you're new to my channel or you're hopping on over from Liz's video, I want to welcome you to my YouTube family. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and accompany me on this home decor journey. Let me know if you enjoy videos like this by chatting with me in the comments and don't forget to give me a like or a thumbs up so that I know you would like me to create more videos like this in the future. Also, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at BoTalksNow for more day-to-day -day posts and inspiration. Let's jump right into it. I'm here shopping for Bo and I'm in one of my favorite spots and I am seeing lots of good things. I had to study Bo and look at his videos and kind of figure out things that he's into as far as his decor and so yes yeah, so that's what I'm doing today. This is just one of many shops that I'm going to be visiting so just want to let you know what's going on today. Okay guys, I'm in my antique mall near my house and I am finding some really good stuff. So I'm super excited to be here. I found only one thing in the thrift store that I just left, but I'm finding a lot more here. So I think I'm gonna probably finish off Bo's items here. So I'm sure that many of you already know who Liz is, but on the off chance that you haven't had the opportunity to discover her just yet, I have to let you know how incredibly talented she is. Her home is impeccable, and she is creative beyond belief. So before my YouTube debut a few months back, I was searching for minimalistic and mid-century home decor videos for inspiration, and that's actually how I stumbled across Liz. I found a few of hers. She's really well known in this home decor niche for her vintage thrifting hauls, and to be quite honest, she inspired me to go out there and source home decor for my space on the secondhand market. I used to thrift quite a bit when I lived in New York City a few years back. I would typically seek out vintage and designer handbags and jewelry and clothing, but the idea of sourcing secondhand home decor and accessories is still relatively new to me. Now Liz and I actually formed our friendship or the bond that we have for home decor here in the comments on our YouTube videos and over on Instagram. So I was all too excited to take part in this challenge with her. As I said before, we did decide to just set a $100 budget for this video. We didn't really go over guidelines or wants, wishes, needs, none of that. So this was really more just like a friendly test of skill to kind of see what items that we pick for each other. I mean, I literally watched just about every video of hers to kind of garner an understanding for her home decor aesthetic. I also stalked her Instagram hardcore because she is such an incredibly talented photographer too. And I really want wanted to deliver for this challenge. I mean, she has such a keen eye. I, I didn't want to disappoint. My goal is to really just get a feel for the types of home decor accents and accessories that she uses to style her home with already, and use that to help me navigate through and seek different pieces in these stores that I think she'd find appealing. In the area that I live in, we do have just a couple of Goodwill and other vintage and thrift locations. So for the last few weeks, I've literally been scouring the shelves in search of these more eclectic and unique bucks. And I have to tell you guys honestly just how amazing the items that I found were each and every time I went out sourcing. I found so many pieces that I felt would ultimately suit her style and work for this challenge. To be quite frank, I mean, they were all so reasonably priced that I've had to keep sort of accumulating the pieces over the past few weeks because I had to reach that agreed upon amount that we set. My experience searching for the items that I bought for Liz for this challenge was probably one of the best experiences that I've had 
had thrifting to do. I was amazed at all of the different pieces that I was able to score and now I have this sudden urge to continue going to these different secondhand stores on the weekends to see what I could score for myself. The only thing I could really compare it to would be a trip to Home Goods because the different products that they place out on the shelves vary from visit to visit and I mean it's like a real life treasure hunt you never really know what you're gonna find. I have to say I'm pretty proud of the collection that I've assembled for her for this challenge and sent her away so if you've already watched her video be sure to let me know below which of the items that I sourced for her was your favorite. Now I have the box that Liz sent me here and I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys and keep it 100% real. I couldn't contain myself. I was like a kid on Christmas morning and I had to take a peek inside but could you blame me? I mean, I was so excited to see the different pieces that she picked out for me. But enough chit chat, let's dive right inside so you can see the different pieces that she picked out for me too. All right, you guys, so let me open up this box. And she did include a note. So Bo, thank you for collabing with me. I'm sure this will be the first of many. I truly hope you enjoy these selections as much as I do. I had a hard time parting with them. Much love, Liz. And that is the honest truth. There were so many pieces that I got for her that I was like, I want that for me too but I know that they're going to a good home. So Liz, I really hope that you enjoyed all the pieces that I sourced for you too. Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna go in for item number one and oh, these are really helpful. So she included these little note cards to kind of, I guess, preface what the item's gonna be. So this says, Ola Cassini Crystal Coasters, my fave, with the little smiley face. So I'm assuming that this was Liz's favorite piece from this box that she sent over for me. Now, left side, inside. Okay, you guys, so these are, so it's a set of four coasters, and I mean, just guessing, because she said that they're crystal, I would assume that it's like a lead crystal or like a, a glass cut crystal. Look at how, look at the detail on these, you guys. So it's almost, I don't know if you can see that. It's almost like a, like an undulating, like a wave-like etched cut all around the perimeter. And these, so these are super heavy, believe it or not. They're, I would say this, like together, they probably weigh, you know, at least two pounds. I don't know if these are a vintage find or if these, because they look pretty contemporary in style to me. But if I had to guess, I would probably say if they were vintage, they'd be like from the 80s. So these are so elegant, you guys. Something like this, I would definitely use on my coffee table or... You know, I might even use them on like a side table that I get here to place a candle on top of. I use coasters literally, I think like in every area. I have them in just about every area of my apartment because I'm a stickler for people using glasses and leaving ring marks on a table. So these are like the perfect gift and I, I don't have any in my little collection or arsenal that are this elevated in design. So these were perfect. She did so good on this. I'm so excited to use these. Okay, next up is, let's see what we have here. So it's an Art Deco style table clock or mantle clock. Crystal needs battery. Thank you for the note, Liz. Packaging peanuts are flying everywhere. So you guys, this is really pretty. So it's a Mikasa. I don't know if you can see that again. I'm going to put this up to the camera. So it's a Mikasa tabletop or mantle lock, like she said. And this is definitely, I mean, with the weight of this piece, it's probably, I mean, I would say like four pounds. So something like this is definitely made of lead crystal. And you can see just with the different, it's like the different lines that are running vertically, this kind of glass detail is very reminiscent of like an art deco style. It does have the gold perimeter around the actual clock itself. And I mean, this is beautiful. So I, it's funny that this is Mikasa because I actually own quite a few different Mikasa pieces and they've all been thrifted finds. Mikasa, just from what I know, I believe is made in Germany. I think at one time it was made in Japan, but it's, I believe more recently it's been made in Germany. When I go to thrift stores, I am constantly seeking out the crystal. That's one of the pieces that I immediately look for because I feel like it is such a classy and elegant way to elevate a home, especially like right now during the holidays, I have a bunch of different crystal bowls 
And I think if you guys have followed me for some time, you know that I drink out of crystal glasses. It's just a way to make yourself feel better. And quite honestly, I'm sure that this piece was probably a bigger portion of the budget, but I know that when I've, like I said, sourced pieces at Goodwill or other different vintage stores and thrift stores in my area, they're relatively inexpensive compared to what you would pay for them if you were to go to an upscale retailer like Bloomingdale's or like a Neiman Marcus. So definitely a great piece to have. Thank you again so much, Liz. I could see myself styling it in my bookshelf or putting it on my nightstand next to my bed. Some, this is classic. So never gonna go out of style and I'm super, super excited for this piece. Again, packaging peanuts doing the most. Okay, so this says mid-century teak slatwood bookends. Now let's take a look at these bad boys. So these, oh, look at the lines. Okay, you guys, so these are definitely, oops, let me get situated here. These are definitely very mid-century modern in appearance. Look at the detailing on this, you guys. So these are beautiful. They're, so she, I'm assuming, where's my note? But these are made of, made of like a teak wood, which is a really nice expensive wood. If you get like outdoor furniture that's made of teak wood, it's supposed to be like a really resilient wood that can withstand like the elements. So that would explain why these are probably like in perfect condition nearly, I don't know, 70 years later. If I had to guess, I would say something like this was probably from the like 1950s or 60s, just based upon the look of them. And from what I know personally about the mid-century modern furniture design and aesthetic, I believe a lot of the pieces we were like heavily influenced by like Denmark. So I'd be curious to know if they, oh, they do have like a little, it's an imprint and it says Espan, 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 E-S-P-A-N. I'm not sure if that's like a brand or I have no idea. So if you guys have any idea as to what that could mean, definitely let me know below in the comments. But these are so great. So I, I mean, if you guys know, I have a ton of different coffee table books. So something like this would definitely work in a bookshelf. I actually kind of think you could even use it as a decor element just face forward. I mean, the lines, like I said, you can see that there's a variation in color. So like the slats, between the slats, it's a lighter, like a lighter wood inlay and the larger slats are a darker, they're like stained a little bit darker for contrast. So I'm super excited about these. Again, another winner, Liz. These are so cool. Okay, you guys, next item. Let's see. There's like two pieces that are bunched together. I'm telling you, there's like packaging peanuts everywhere. She did an excellent job on packaging. I have to say, I probably packaged her stuff. I don't know if she's gonna show this part, but I definitely like over packaged because I wanted to make sure that everything made it safely and in one piece. So I appreciate all the bubble wrapping, Liz. So this says four piece espresso set made in Italy, 1950s, signed underneath. So I'm assuming these are gonna be like cute little espresso cups maybe. Guys, look how cool these are. I don't know if you guys are coffee drinkers, but these are little espresso cups and they have like a gold rim. I wonder if this is like real gold or not. I would imagine, I mean, I, I don't have these, but I've definitely drank it out of them before. Okay, cool. So they are, so they're, it's like a gold rimmed espresso cup and it does come apart for easy cleaning. Super cool though. So it has, what does this say? Fidenza and Italy underneath. So it is stamped. So these were obviously made in Italy. She thinks they were made in the 1950s. Yeah, and I would probably agree that these are definitely more of an antique. Something like this would definitely come in handy when I'm making espresso shots in my Keurig machine in the mornings. Okay, so let's see what this is. Okay, so it's like a little a saucer that goes under I don't know if you guys can see all the different cut detailing on this. Does this one have any engravings? I don't think it does. But this would essentially be, I think like a, so it's a, a four piece set. So you would set the coffee, I'm sorry, the espresso cup on top like that. So these are very stylish, very mid-century chic, and I'm super excited to actually use these. So thank you again, Liz, a total winner. So excited. So next up would, let's see. So this says three piece set, part one marble table set. And then this, actually, I'm gonna just open them all quickly. This is very cool. This is like right up my alley in terms of color. 
So this, you guys, this is cool. It's like a salt and pepper shaker. And this here is what I'm at. I think it's a, it's like a napkin holder. So I don't know if you can see that. I think these are, I don't know if these are porcelain or if they're ceramic, but it's like a, it has like a glazed effect on top. It looks like marble. So it's like a marble glazed sort of design on all three pieces. Super cool though. It's a very unique pattern and something like this, I mean, just based on the, the actual silhouettes of the pieces themselves, I would imagine that this is probably from like the 70s if I had to guess for being so gosh that's probably I mean I would say at least 50 plus years and they actually have the little bottom enclosures they're still intact on both and there's no chips or signs of wear so I mean that's pretty cool these are really really cool I could definitely see myself using these on a tablescape with my porcelain plates that I had so very very cool okay next item let's see so this says 40 to 50s vintage face. Okay, you guys, so very similar to the last few pieces. So this is a vase, or I don't know if you can see it. It's like a vase or a water pitcher, and it has a very similar, it's a little bit different actually on this one. It's more of like a white colored, like veining throughout. Super, super cool though. And this one has, it has an engraving on the bottom. So this says 212 USA. I'm not sure. 212 is like a New York City area code. I don't know if that's that means anything. And obviously USA, so it's made locally. And I don't know, with something like this, because it's so, it's such an antique piece, I don't know if this was made by like an actual company, like a Hager, or if this is, act, if this was made just by someone, by a local craftsman or somebody who does pottery. So the silhouette of this piece is actually very beautiful. I don't know if you can tell that it has the, it's like an elongated handle. And I would actually probably use something like this to decorate or accent one of my console tables or like my bookshelf. And I think it's, it's actually glazed on the inside too. So you could definitely use it as like a base or a vessel to display an arrangement of flowers or, you know, even Bow stems if you don't, if I didn't want to ruin it. She found really great pieces because these are all, I mean, they're absolutely like no, there's no damage to any of them. So for their age, whatever antique or vintage store that she thrifted these from has super great pieces because they are all intact. So very cool. I can't wait to display this piece. Okay, guys, so there is one last piece and this is probably the largest piece in the box. And the note says, so 50s mid-century Hager or McCoy vase. I can already tell I'm like obsessed with this piece. This, okay guys, look. Look at that. Look at that silhouette. So this is obviously very mid-century in style. It's actually kind of funny because I got Liz a very similar set of cream-ish Style, like mid-century style bases so you have to go check those out on her channel too so this piece is very textured it almost has like this it's like a I don't know if it's like a spackling or I'm not sure what they would actually call this but it reminds me of like like a stucco wall but very very cool splattered effect it's almost like a popcorn ceiling or like a pebble texture I would probably use something like this on my dining room table I have a few other different bases and vessels that I bought from Home Sense and Home Goods. Obviously, they're nowhere near as, you know, eclectic or as cool as something like this, but it would definitely accompany those pieces really well. But this is just a stunning piece, and I've never owned a Hager style or a McCoy style base before, so very cool to have something like this in my collection. This is probably one of my favorite pieces from this haul, so thank you again, Liz. You definitely knocked it out of the park. So I'm very excited to accessorize these pieces around my home, and I'm sure I'll be posting Instagram pictures galore, so stay tuned. So that is it for today's video, my friends. As some of you may have seen, I've already decked the halls of my home for the holidays this year. I'll be sure to link that video above just in case you've yet to watch it. I want to say a huge thank you to Liz once more for collaborating with me on this incredible vintage thrift styling session and haul. I hope that each of you continues to feel inspired while sourcing inspiration and decor that elevates your home in your own unique style. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so that you can be notified first for upcoming posts and videos. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and give me a like and a thumbs up so that I know you enjoyed this video. Until next time, bye!